A cash infusion for NJ Transit, more money for public schools, and some property tax relief. The new $37.4 billion budget signed by Governor Murphy will fund all these items, and it's raising $1.5 billion in new revenue to pay for it in new taxes that won't impact most New Jerseyans, according to NJ Spotlight's John Reitmeyer. The final version specifically targets uh, wealthy people and wealthy corporations with the, the big tax increases. Here's the list. A new 10.75 percent tax on the 1,800 or so people in New Jersey earning more than $5 million, pentamillionaires that had raised $280 million, boosting the corporate business tax on businesses making more than a million dollars up to 11.5 percent for two years, then 10.5 percent for two years would raise $425 million. That's really trying to be surgical to not put any pain on the average New Jersey resident, direct pain on the average New Jersey resident, and keep it on those who maybe have the means to, to uh, absorb some of these new costs the most. The budget also closes corporate loopholes. One fix called combined reporting would raise $200 million by preventing companies from moving profits out of state to avoid taxes. And repatriation would generate another $200 million by taxing profits parked in offshore shelters. The state also hopes to make $188 million by taxing online retailers from out of state. Businesses call these measures. Devastating is the word. Um, there are so many challenges to this budget and the tax increases across the board. The CBT surcharge, the increase on millionaires tax over $5 million, which is a tax on small business, uh, the repatriation language and combined reporting. All these things alone would be concerned. You pile these all on together, and we're very concerned. They're doing just fine. They have figured out how to game the system um, through in, uh, in tax incentives, tax breaks, um, an army of tax lawyers to make sure that their effective tax rate is lower. And um, it's time to even the, even the playing field for all businesses that operate in New Jersey. But wait, there's more. A 90-day tax amnesty program could raise $200 million, a one-shot deal. The state will also collect 50 cent per ride surcharges on Uber and Lyft. It'll impose the sales tax on home shares like Airbnb, and it will tax the liquid nicotine in e-cigarettes. Those are sort of modernization taxes where you're kind of bringing the tax code up to date with different services that have become popular since the tax code was originally written. Quite frankly, costs are going up in New Jersey, and it's uh, it, we need that kind of revenue to um, keep the lights on in New Jersey. So those are the taxes. What do New Jersey residents get in return for that new revenue? The budget keeps some of the governor's promises. It pumps a robust $3.2 billion into the pension system. And it gives NJ Transit $242 million, the amount originally requested in Murphy's initial budget proposal. But the transit system's been underfunded for the past eight years. It will get us going, but certainly won't uh, m like fix New Jersey Transit forever. And I don't even think the governor would make that claim. Public schools will get more money, an extra $402 million, and a new formula championed by Senate President Sweeney will attempt to distribute the money more equitably. No one district will see its aid change more than $3.5 million the first year. The budget lets homeowners deduct 15000 in local taxes from their state tax bill, and it also restores $150 million that had been cut from the homestead rebate, a popular property tax relief program. So for someone who has a bill over $10,000, that gives them a little bit of a break. Does it uh, make property taxes uh, fixed? No, but it, it helps cushion the blow. And if you're living on a fixed income, uh, a couple hundred dollars off your property tax bill is pretty meaningful. Another plus for families, the budget creates a new tax credit for child care and dependents and will gradually raise the earned income tax credit to 40 percent of federal levels. And one major benefit comes from what the budget doesn't do. It doesn't restore the sales tax back to 7 percent. If you're one of those tax-weary uh, New Jersey residents who are, uh, anytime you hear about a tax going up and you want to see more spending cuts and you think, that this state budget is already a little too excessive. Um, that is certainly a feature that you're going to like, that there is $580 million that's going to come from someone else. It's time we talk about getting our spending under control. Brenda, this budget is an 8% increase in spending, 8%. 
We can't afford this. All sides agree Jersey could benefit by crafting a three-year budget on a fiscal cycle instead of these one-year budgets with one-shot revenues. But New Jersey's budget is based on the political calendar with all of the pitfalls that entails. In Newark, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News.